um, thanks to Talking Galleries for inviting me to do a little presentation on our thoughts of uh, what's going to happen next in the art market. Um, I have a, a, a little, well, a few slides that I want to kind of take you through. Um, but the focus on this discussion is really, you know, we're obviously in the midst of a, uh, a, a very serious um, pandemic that the uncertainty re regarding the future is still still out there. Um, we now sort of many countries are entering the second wave and the implications for the art market um, could be severe um, and hopefully uh, we will get out of this, you know, in a better way uh, and be more prepared for the future than 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 we have been for this particular crisis. So I just wanted to um, take you a little bit through, um, I guess, where we come from, because I think it's very easy to start to look at the market today and and uh, be very negative about what's what's happening. And obviously, it has had and is currently having a serious impact on the market as a whole. But I also think there are some uh, very uh, potentially positive things that will come out of this that could have a very significant impact on the art market going forward. Now, I think just by looking at where we come from, I think going back 20 years, uh, and this is really to the start of where we uh, were starting to look at the art market. So around 2000, uh, Art Tactic was set up and we started to monitor the market uh, in many ways. Um, and one of them was obviously looking at the auction market. And I think, you know, by this particular uh, graph that you have in front of you uh, exemplifies, you know, how far we actually have got in terms of uh, a marketplace. I mean, in 2000, we had about $1.3 billion in turnover among these four major categories within the auction houses. So there's Christie's and Sotheby's. So that's Chinese art, old masters, impressionist, and modern and contemporary. Now in 2019, which wasn't the, the top year, we saw he already st started to see some uh, weaknesses last year, but that particular amount was about 7.4 billion. Um, so we're talking about a market that has grown more than six times. Um, and if you look at contemporary or post-war contemporary, this market has gone from 300 million to 4.1 billion, uh, which is more than 14 times. So, um, you know, the market has changed radically. So I think, in you know, despite where we're finding ourselves right now, uh, I think it's also important to look at the market uh, you know where it is, where we have come from, and we're basically in a very different situation uh, now than than we were in the be beginning of the millennium. Um, part of this has been driven by several things. And part is wealth accumulation um, and the interest that um, people around the world has taken in in art, uh, art as a collectible, art as an asset class. Um, we have seen an incredible proliferation of um, uh, in the art market infrastructure around the world. Uh, from art fairs, biannuals, new galleries, auction houses, uh, and, and so forth. Um, and all of this has created a much, much bigger marketplace than we had uh, 20 years ago. So despite the situation that we currently find ourselves in, uh, we are in a much more robust and much more solid foundations that we were uh, 20 years ago. So I think that's just kind of important to bear in mind. Um, one of the things that we're going to talk a little bit about today is technology and the impact that technology uh, is having on the market as a whole. Um, but there is also um, there is a story regarding uh, the online art market. So basically, we started looking at this in 2013, and over the last six, seven years, we have been monitoring how that has evolved. Um, and you can see um, this is basically based on sales uh, from the major online platforms around the world um, that has grown from about 1.5 billion in 2013 to about 4.8 billion in 2019. Now, I think it's worth noting that what we've seen as a kind of deacceleration or a slowing in the growth of the years. Um, and I think part of this has been, you know, up until very recently, um, a, a kind of a lack of or reluctance to embrace the digital uh, properly. Um, I think, you know, in, in the traditional art world has still been a very uh, dominant aspect of the art market. And, you know, the, the thing to move to digital is something that has, um, I think, you know, many has been resistant to that particular development. Um, so if we look at the art market, um, you know, the online art market as a share of the, the total art market, we estimated around be about, you know, 7%. So less than 10% of online sales, um, you know, is accounted for by as a percentage of the total, and I think this is kind of you know important because when we went into the crisis in uh, March this year, I think you know it it showed how vulnerable the art market was to physical events, uh, to the physical nature of how how art is um, being you know. Um, transacted in terms of art fairs and physical online uh, offline auctions 
Um, and the online aspect, as you said, is 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 a, only a fraction of the overall market, which meant meant that when suddenly the art market found itself, you know, relatively in, almost paralyzed in terms of operating under normal conditions, um, there wasn't there was you know to shifting simply to online. That that infrastructure wasn't there. But things has changed, and I think this is worthwhile looking at where we are right now. Um, so, as I said, the art world um, in the early to, I would say, March, April, went to into almost a kind of a state of um, cardiac arrest. I mean, I think, you know, virtually all possible avenues for how art was normally exhibited and transacted and consumed um, was uh, either postponed or cancelled uh, or had to move rapidly online. Um, this had um, Claire McAndrew and Art Balls UBS just launched a mid-year survey uh, that showed that there was a 36% decline in gallery sales in the first half of 2020. Uh, we've been looking at the auction uh, aspect and in parallel you will see that also 49% decline in auction sales in the first half of 2020. Um, so, you know, obviously the, the crisis has had a severe impact and it's had a severe impact, as I said, again, because of the um, the fact that the, the fiscal infrastructure that, that the art market relies on, whether it's fairs or biannuals or physical auctions are no longer uh, available. But on the positive side, I think, you know, we are starting to see a, uh, a move to the digital at a pace and speed. Um, that uh, I, having been sort of kind of monitoring this market for the last seven years, has never seen before. Um, you know, again, Claire McAndrew and Art Basel UBS report um, talks about that the online gallery sales now accounting for 37% of total sales in the first half, up significantly from 10% in 2019. The only, only, sorry, only, only online auctions uh, that we have seen uh, in uh, at Sotheby's Christie's and Phillips. Uh, jumped, you know, almost uh, 200, more than 250 uh, percent between January and August, and now accounted for about 600 million. Now these are online only auctions. In addition to this, we have, you know, the rise of hybrid auctions, etc. So, on one hand, yes, the the, um, the the traditional art market as we know it uh, has had a significant, um, you know, uh, in, there has been a significant negative impact. But at the same time, as I said, we're starting to see. Uh, a, a something new emerging. And I think this is the new emerging that I want to talk a little bit about uh, over the next coming slides. Um, uh, before I do that, just quickly looking at, um, as I said, the, the online only auctions that we saw at Solvice and Christie's, which generated 600, uh, almost 600 million in 2020 for the first eight months. Um, you could see there's sort of significant jump from 2019. Um, and if we look at the kind of sections uh, in terms of the collecting categories you can see that the growth has been almost uh, across all different collecting categories fine art seen a significant um, uh, uptick so so does jewels and watches cars design decorative arts furniture almost every single category has benefited from um, you know uh, fr from the fact that more and more on, uh, online auctions are now taking place online um, is also looking at if you break down the fine art segment, you can see that the sale of online uh, or the sale of post-war contemporary art uh, in these online only sections has grown by more than 400% impressionist modern art, more than 300%. Uh, interesting also to see that, you know, older categories such as old masters, which uh, is not the kind of category that you typically sell online, uh, also are finding, you know, significant interest. So I start to, I think what we're starting to see are, early signals of um, a shift in confidence among uh, both the auction houses and the uh, the buyers uh, in terms of what is possible to sell online, at what price points is possible to sell online. We have seen uh, more than a doubling uh, in uh, in the level of, of uh, average prices, uh, which means that I think, again, people are more comfortable buying online. Uh, and all of these things, they say, has a bit of a snowball effect, which ultimately the more confidence buyers have in buying, the more um, the likelihood is that the auction houses will start to uh, consign and sellers are looking to consign higher value art. Um, so I think on one hand, yes, this crisis has been a, um, a, an incredible challenge for most of the, for, for anyone, any industry, but particularly the art world and the cultural world. Uh, but at the same time, I think we're starting to now see the market is starting to adapt and starting to find other channels uh, to reach 
their consumers and new collectors. And I think this is one of the kind of probably one of the exciting things that is currently happening. Um, so where are we going? Um, first of all, as I said, I think we are, you know, we're really in a in a moment of uh, digital transformation. I mentioned early on that you know, the growth rate that we've seen in the online market has been slowing over the years. And a part of that, I think, was a reluctance to really embrace the digital, to see it as an integral part of uh, a gallery business or auction business, an integral part of the customer journey or the collecting journey. Um, and as long as the physical world pre-COVID was kind of a very powerful, um, you know, it's a very powerful marketplace uh, in terms of fairs, auctions, and there was very little need really for that online element. Obviously, the crisis itself and the pandemic has um, illustrated that, you know, certainly right now, the online is almost the only the only uh, viable route left. Um, so on the global scale, I think we're starting to see, you know, consumers and collectors changing the behavior. That's, you know, behavior in the way they are, discovering art, the way they are transacting art, the way they're engaged with art. Um, you know, we're starting obviously as, as a result of um, travel restrictions and uh, the ability to move from one country to another is now limited and probably will be even further limit, you know, further limitations as we go into the autumn. Um, all of these things will have an impact on how, you know, the traditional models in the art market works and again uh, the possibility of this sort of kind of virtual world to step in at least to try to compensate for some of the losses that is uh, now being incurred in 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 the, in the real world um so when i look at the what we've seen in terms of technology i mean the art market has seen almost more adoption in the last six months since the outbreak of the covid um than i've seen over the last six years I mean, the market is embracing, uh, you know, online art fairs, uh, online only auctions, new art e-commerce channels, education, webinars, virtual studio tours, online private viewing rooms, virtual reality, augmented reality, artificial intelligence, machine learning, all these kind of things are, you know, basically has been almost kind of, I would say in the art world, more like buzzwords that has been, you know, you know, obviously they've been on the agenda in many other industries, but not really something that has been of of, of real value in the art market. And now I think this is changing. Um, uh, partly again because there's no other option, but I think we're going to start to see an, a significant amount of innovation in terms of how these different platforms evolve and how the consumer now engaged with the art world going forward. Um, so. In this, I'm obviously there will hopefully be a time where we will revert to some kind of normality, and we go back to, you know, uh, engaging with the art world as we used to do uh, ahead of the uh, the COVID-19. Um, but I think also their new habits have have been forming um, the way we. Um, you know, deal and uh, the way we trade art, the way we um, engage with with the consumers. All of these things are now starting to to change. Um, we see this in the workplace. A lot of people are not, do not want to go back to their offices. They are very happy conducting meetings on Zoom. Um, and I think you know, yes, even if we move back to a normality, there will be things that will stick. There will be certain habits that we are currently um, building and and adopting in this particular period that I think will be also. Um, you know relevant for for the future um we're starting to also see lots in regards to data uh, obviously a field that we've been working in for for many years um and whilst in the past i think data has been sort of um you know slightly operating on the periphery of the art market never really been seen as something uh you know truly essential uh, I think what we're starting to see now is 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 an is an, a new kind of industry as services um, building up around how to use data more effectively. I mean, obviously, the digital uh, allows us now to collect data much more efficiently. Um, galleries and auction houses can, you know, get very accurate data regarding consumer behavior on their websites, their what they buy, how they buy, and so forth. And all this data can obviously be used to tailor experiences to the individual clients. So I think going forward, we're going to start to see that the data that is now currently being harvested and collected through the uh, through the increasing engagement between consumers and the art world through these digital digital platforms uh, will also start to give rise to a new type of um, industry which is around servicing um, you know creating confidence creating tools uh, whether it's as say pricing tools valuation tools um, recent um, 
algorithms that's kind of being built to spot the latest artist. Uh, all of these things will be, uh, you know, very valuable tools in a, in a digital world where, in in a many ways, where you know decision making is 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 replacing in many sense human relationships with more kind of machine tools. Um, I don't think we will ever, as I said in my second point here, I don't think we will ever move to a world where everything is truly, um, you know, digital. And I, I think, you know, we will go back to uh, many of the aspects that we did prior to the uh, to, to the pandemic. And I think, you know, in a sense, what will, what will evolve is a, a hybrid world, a world where, uh, you know, many in many cases, maybe the division between the offline and online, as we have known in the past, will become much more blurred. Um, we will um, we will operate, you know, depending on our desires. Uh, often, like we see in the retail, you know, this multi omni-channel experiences. Sometimes you feel like you know transacting or engaging online, maybe out of convenience, and sometimes you do offline. I think again. The art world is also moving towards uh, that type of model where the, we, it's really about being um, offline and online and being a, a, available uh, for uh, for a client at any 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 point. So that I think you know we this, this hybrid world. As I said, I don't think we will ever go fully digital. Um, I think we will virtually just that the digital component on the art world will become much stronger i think post this pandemic than it has been in the past and i think that's a that's not a bad thing i think that's a good thing and i think it's actually uh will do um it, it will will help building tools that also would allow the art market to maybe engage with different audiences more effectively than they've done in the past so what is this sort of kind of i guess um as i said the the the, the data is one element of of new type of tech service that will emerge but also i think we will start to see a, a new ecosystem of other tech services that will is, is really there to try to make um the um the, the consumer experience more uh you know more trusted um it, it's everything from you know a value to a um a, a digital certificate to a um, condition report whatever it is that can allow a, a client to become more you know, feel more comfortable when it transacts online. All these things are, there. this ecosystem is already there. I mean, it's already active. It's just that it hasn't really found, I think, the kind of the moment to, to really flourish. But I think this moment is now here. And I think a lot of the um, startups and the, the, the companies that's in this field will start to um, see real traction in, in months to come um, as more and more people are embracing, you know, the whole, the whole, the whole digital aspect of the art market. Um, so I think, you know, I guess, as I said, also with the adoption of technology, I think that the art market is, is becoming, uh, more also in tune with the next generation of collectors. Uh, we know that, uh, from our own research that younger buyers, new buyers are more likely or more indifferent actually to, in terms of, you know, engaging with art online or offline. Um, they um, they are digital natives. They are more adapt to using social media. All these things, um, you know, is actually an op this, the, the current situation is an opportune moment for the art market to um, to 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 tune in and to fine tune how to actually um, to engage with that that particular collector base. Uh, so I think you know many of the aspects we see now. I mean, if you looked at the way that the auction houses were conducting their uh, particularly Sotheby's uh, in June, their hybrid sales which was a new format. It was uh, an incredibly slick um, and professional production, uh, which was a kind of a mix almost of a game show uh, with a e-commerce channel together with a traditional auction, all packaged into one. And I think that format is something that is as it's, it's attractive to, to new buyers, not necessarily young buyers, but new buyers in general. So in, in many ways, um, all these new experimentation that we've seen over the last six months, I think, are going to have a lasting impact on the market going forward. And I think, you know, this new normal, I think they we have to remember when I think when technology is adopted and people starting to use it, it's very rarely that we go back to the past. So in a sense, the fact when people starting to use it and they feel comfortable it with the whole the whole aspect of, of technology, um, then I think you know it's very unlikely that we will go back to what we used to do um, prior to to the pandemic. So there will definitely be aspects of what we have seen over the last um, well six months now 
that I think is going to have a radical impact on the way that the art market moves forward. Uh, but in many ways, in a positive sense, it will be a complementary to the world that we used to know, uh, rather than something that's going to, you know, steal or cannibalize what what currently exists. Um, so I think, you know, um, despite that we are all of us in a in, in a relatively challenging situation, and you know, with all the uncertainty that the current pandemic is presenting to us, I think it's important that we, you know, in a sense, are now becoming agile and adaptive and really uh, embrace the type of, of, of technologies out there. And I think you know that will be something that will clearly help us uh, in the long term. So I would just want to uh, wish everyone all the best and. Um, and hopefully we will um, we'll meet sometime in, in, in the future. Thank you.